So, I grabbed myself some new pedals this week, a new VRS Direct Force Pro. How are they going to compare to the old Husenville Sprint? My name is Gavin Halls. This is Smoking Still Garage. Let's do a pedal comparison. Intro. All right, so let's get on with it. Test these, uh, test these pedals out. So I've done a bit of driving um, beforehand. So probably got about two hours on them. Um, interesting. I went to Zandvoort first to try them out. And I've got quite a few base laps here in the last couple of weeks with the sprints because I've been doing quite a bit of training there for other drivers. And within nine laps, I went faster than, um, than I've ever done before. So that was that was interesting. The first four laps were horrendous. I started off with the um, with the weaker of the two springs in, and really, really didn't like it. The pedal just felt horrific. It felt like a um, it felt like a normal road car pedal that had lots of air in the system. Like the pedal was going to the floor. So quickly jumped out, switched over, put the stronger spring in. Um, spent a bit of time adjusting it up without driving, just trying to get it to feel right. And then went out and um, wow, it felt good. So the only way to describe it now, it's quite firm. Um, it's very much like a real life Formula 3 pedal now. It's, it's, there's not a lot of movement in it. Um, I think that's why I'm getting on with it. It's a bit more single seater. It's a bit more what I'm used to in real life. Took couple of laps to get into it and then yeah bang two temps quicker put it I mean was it down to the pedals I don't know maybe it's me just haven't really pushed uh, with the sprints that hard but even even without going quicker it's just impressive that I was on the pace of the sprint straight away I've also got quite a few hours around here in the sprints, a lot, in fact. Probably done about 20 hours in the last two weeks. So I had a big race here last weekend. So lots of data to go against, but I am liking what I feel so far. So what do I like about them? Well, first off, let's start with a throttle. Um, I actually think the throttle is a little undersprung. There's, I haven't, I haven't moved that load cell up in the, uh, in the throttle pedal yet to adjust it up to full strength it's it's as it came from the factory um, for me I just think it's a little undersprung but I don't seem to be having too many uh, dramas with it so yeah make it that what you will I will um, I will make an adjustment on that at some point and see if we can get it a little more springy I just like to feel something under my foot a little more but it is super super smooth there's no uh, fluctuations in pressure it's one pressure from top to bottom so from no throttle to full throttle it's just one clean sweep in motion and I think you'll see that on the video the throttle pedal itself is really nice it's it's well sized it's just tall enough I've got little feet but I have got a heel plate raised up on my pedals so um, I think it would be a good size for everyone sort of one size fits all it's totally adjustable in that foot plate and yeah it just feels really good bump stop out of the factory was set in just the right position for me so i'm no, really happy brake pedal like i said we've got the tough spring in the strong spring and i've i've been playing around with the adjustment on that cantilever bar so you've got the rod if you look at my other video you've got the rod that you can adjust actually i'll throw some b b footage up b roll up of it you can uh, you can adjust that rod and I haven't quite figured out exactly what it does yet I've only literally just been playing with it quickly but basically I've, I've managed to adjust out all of the play in the pedal so now I've just got pretty much a solid pedal when I push on it I'm getting feedback into the brakes I've got a lot of travel on the brake pedal but I don't want a lot I'm just using the pressure from that load cell to get the car stopped and it's much more exact what I really like about the pedal is is not the feeling I get as I push it down which is great but what I really really like 
is appealing as I come off the brake pedal. There was a famous racing driver, I think it was Jackie Stewart, once said that he was surprised how many racing drivers hadn't figured out that it's more important how you come off the brakes than it is how you get on them. And this is true. So the way we bleed out of a pedal, especially with a cup car, is critical um, to keeping the car balanced. And the feeling I'm getting from, from this spring setup on these VRS pedals is superb. I really love the way the feedback I'm getting as I come off the pedal. It's allowing me, I'm sure, to be a lot smoother in the way I'm coming out of the brakes. The way I'm going down on them as well, I feel pretty confident on them. I feel like I can really bring the car up to the limit and um, get as much braking forces in as possible without locking the wheels. And I feel like I can balance the car quite well over bumps. Uh, to minimise any sort of micro lockups, which would affect lag time. Clutch pedal. I haven't actually used it yet, I'll tell you the truth, because <laughs> I haven't had a lot of time. Uh, but it feels really good. Like, when I push the clutch down, it's got a lovely little spring back on it that feels like a, a real car clutch. We'll do a launch in a minute and see. I, I honestly, I haven't even used the clutch pull away yet. But anyway, let's, let's do some... Um, Let's bang a hot lap in. I'll do a bit of concentrating and you can just sit and watch your data. So I'll be interested to watch this video back and see how these pedals uh, look because I haven't even seen the video of them working yet. Interested to see what my feet are up to. Just a tiny little bit of locking up there, but not too bad. Had it under control. This is where these pedals pay off around here. Just that control braking down to low speed. We're a little slow coming out, but they just feel so good on the way you get off of them around that corner. And tricky braking into here. So on it all the way in, sharpen it up for the end, get it slowed down. And then we're back on the power coming out. Dropping in quite a bit of time, but should be decent 45-ish. Lap, if we survive the chicken. Chicken's been nice. I hate that chicane. We call it a chicken, by the way. The long story to that. I'll support sport, guys. Thanks, Ryan. So, breaking down, up to third, then ever in the throttle over the curbs and then up to full power so what are we in like a 45 5 maybe yeah 45 5 so not a bad lap at all um that's like bang on the race pace for this setup what am i going to do now what am i going to do now i'm going to jump off we're going to go and do like a couple of the uh, race runs so like 12 lap sprints probably do three sessions with these pedals I'll chuck the sprints back on. We'll do another three sessions with those and we'll take the average laps and we'll have a look at the data at the end. So uh, let's have a go at clutch start. I haven't done it yet. I haven't tried it. Let's give it a go. See what happens. Um, so I'll do full clutch, first gear, um, nothing else, no other tricks. So straight off the clutch pedal. So first gear, full RPM, one, two, three, and go. Tell you what, that ain't too bad. Um, that could be quite quick. Let's try again. Thanks, R Racing, for destroying the clutch in the cup car so we can only do one practice start before we melt it. Genius. Thanks for screwing it for everybody else. Right, first gear, full clutch down. One, two, three. Oh, hold on, I wasn't ready. <laughs> one, two, three, go.
It's a little slow. Feels like most of the clutch bite points right at the end of the pedal, um, just before you've nearly released it fully. So I think we'll do one more. I think I can be a little harder on the initial sort of drop to where it springs back. I want it to be there, but it's not. It's more like here. Might just be the way I've set the pedal up. Anyway, let's give it a go. Let's see if we can get away. One, two, three, go. I tell you what. I mean, I don't know. I might well have to use a clutch because um, the problem is with the software. Like on the software of the sprints, I. I used to play with the software, so I only had like 37% clutch on a full pedal. And then I used to use a button on the steering wheel as 100% clutch. When the lights went out, I used to drop the button. So instantly the car was pulling away and then just bleed the last bit out on the clutch pedal. I'm not going to be able to do it with this. Um, we can do it if we go into the, um, is it the Joy Caleb files in iRacing. There is a way around it, but it's a bit more of a faff. Um, so I'll probably just end up using a clutch pedal on my own. Other thing with the sprints is obviously if you want to just use a clutch pedal, you can you can um, get into software and you can make different profiles for the clutch pedal. You can shape your clutch curves. Can't do that with these yet. So I'm kind of hoping VRS do bring some software out um, with the pedal for the clutch. It won't be the end of the world, but I do like to be a quick starter off the grid. Um, so yeah, take a bit of practice, sure I can nail it. I felt a lot more comfortable with this clutch pedal than I ever did with the sprints. I feel like I'm getting feedback from the clutch pedal, although I'm not, but I just feel like I'm in a lot more control of it. Um, so I would say I, I quite like the clutch. It does feel rather fantastic. It is very, very close to a decent manual clutch pedal in a road car. Uh, yeah, yeah, not too bad at all. Quite like that. So, I'm just going to have one more go, actually. One, two, three, go. That was better. Yeah, I think with about 50 of those practice starts, you'll find where your bike point is. You'll get, get your motor senses knocking up, and uh, you'd be flying. So, yeah, that was really cool. Well done on the clutch pedal. Okay, so, we've got the sprints back on the rig, and the eagle eyed amongst you notice that I was too lazy to put the clutch pedal on uh, there's just no point so we'll go with just a brake and throttle what we need and uh, let's go out and do a lap and I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like about these pedals so we'll start off with the not likes um, straight away the faceplate where your foot touches the pedal on the sprints not adjustable it's fixed one position and it's not the end of the world is they're quite well made they're quite well set up but, you know, I would like that ability to set the pedals up absolutely where I want them to be. Uh, number two, what else don't I like? I've only noticed since I've been driving the VRS, but what it is, with the sprints having the rubber bushes, I've tried all the settings on them. So go on hard rubbers, medium, soft. And I found the only way I could really make them work was to run the really soft rubbers in them so you'll see when I push the brake down I've got quite a lot of pedal travel now that seems to be the way I like them and it you know when I've got them like that I go quickest which is what counts but then if you compare that to how I've set the VRS up with that stiff spring something's going on there so I could never just get a feeling with these with that stiff rubber in they just felt like a switch there was no consistency it was just on off there was nothing in between now is that the difference between going from the rubbers and going over to a steel coil spring I don't know but I also feel like it's had a bit of a difference on the way the car handles so taking for example turn one at Imola you want to use all the corner on all the track on the entry. Get the car as close to that grass as you can on the right-hand side. Now, with these sprints under braking, 
I'm a bit nervous to get the car all the way over. But with the VRS, I'm a lot more confident about placing it over on that right-hand side. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. I do feel some difference in the feedback I'm getting through the steering between the two pedals, which again, it's a little strange. I can't put my finger on why. It's got to be something to do with how I'm applying the brakes going into the corners. But there is a difference, and it feels like with the VRS, I've just got a bit more clarity in what's going on. Very, very strange. Um, so what do I like about these sprint pedals? Well, the software. I love the software. The ability to be able to chop and change between cars and switch pedal maps over in seconds is a massive plus to me. Especially, you know, when we're playing iRacing. I want to jump out of here now, jump into a Radical or a V8 supercar. 15 seconds, I've got the map up, the pedals are set up and I'm ready to go. I'm not going to be able to do that with the VRS, and that's a concern. Anyway, let's crack on. And we'll bang a lap in. You can see what these pedals look like when they're under a bit of pressure. And me. Try not to die. Just a little wide there. track what happens at Aqua Millerali stays at Aqua Millerali that's what I'm going with Just a couple of lock ups So I think we're a little quicker with this one. I think that boils down to just having a lot of hours around here with these pedals in the last few weeks. So we've done a 45 free. Um, not going to sweat about that too much. Um, as I say, I've racked up about 20 hours around here preparing for a race. So got a lot of time around here with these pedals. So it ain't going to take long for me to bed back into them. So, what we'll do now, I'm going to run off, I'll, uh, I'll switch you guys off, I'll run off, we'll go and do some race runs with these pedals on, and then uh, we'll come back, see how we get on. Anyway, alright, so we've done the laps, let's have a look at some uh, some data, and see what's going on. So I've picked the two quickest laps uh, from the sessions, so we've got, in the blue, is the sprints, and the red, is the VRS. So the sprints were quickest, but there's nothing in it. Nothing at all. And I'm a little excited at the data. This is going to help me make a decision. So uh, remember what I was saying coming down to turn or what I call turn one. I think it's turn two to turn four. I call it turn one because it's the first turn. So I was saying with the VRS, I feel like I can just push the car out to the edge. I feel a lot more control, a lot more in control under the braking, and I can really take the car over to the edge of the track. And we're talking minute amounts, but when you're chasing every last thousand, another inch, 
well, we all know another inch is always good. We all we'd all give quite a bit for another inch. <laughs> so going into turn two, you can see with the uh, with the sprints, I'm actually breaking a little bit early. So here's the the brakes we we're looking at now. So I'm breaking a little bit early. Um, this is quite common for me with the sprints, which is just this big initial peak and then a drop off. And I've been trying to get rid of it for months. It drives me crazy. But what excites me, what makes me very, very happy is this VRS graph. You can see just a tiny little peak and then it's nice and flat. Now, considering we've got no software, I'm doing that all off the pedal. That that makes me happy. I can see a big future for these pedals and me if we can carry on doing that. So we're breaking 12 meters later with the VRS um, and we're not breaking as hard until the middle phase of the braking. You can see where we've braked a little earlier with the sprints and a lot harder. So my peak force with the sprints was 79 percent whereas peak force with the VRS was 72%. Now we've braked harder and earlier, and then I've had to drop out the brakes to carry the speed into the corner with the sprints, whereas we brake later and I'm able to sustain an even brake pressure. Look at that all the way across. It's beautiful. 64 just sitting there, pretty much dead straight. And then we just have tiny little poke at the end just to knock the last few kilometers an hour off and we do that with both pedals and a drop off as well you can see on the blue line just here it's looking pretty jagged all these lines are very jagged and raggedy whereas with the vrs we've got smooth lines and again that excites me for the future because smooth lines means keeping the car more balanced which means we can push it closer to the edge. The smoother you are, the more on the edge you can put the car without risk of locking wheels and um, overheating the tires. So that's a good thing. I'm liking what I see. So all the way down, remember what I said, I really like the feel. You know, I'm happy with how the brakes feel when I push the pedal down, but I love the feel of the VRSs as I take my foot off the brake. And you can see it there. It's just looking a lot smoother compared to the sprints. So um, the throttle as well is interesting. I seem to be a lot keener to get on the power with the VRS than I do with the sprints. Um, and considering I've got a map on the sprint software to ramp the throttle up because that's what we need for the cup car. So the first 50% tends to be a bit like a switch or should be should be quite abrupt and then after that we're ramping the throttle on so steadily the last 50 percent so we don't spin the wheels i'm managing to do that with a vrs without using any funky software or making any pretty maps just with my foot so that excites me as well so we move on um and it's really close we're talking there we're literally trading blows the whole lap so the sprints are quicker in some corners and the vrs is quicker in our, and we're talking four thousands so remember i was saying about turn seven with a vrs i really was liking the feel of the brakes i was coming out mid corner and it shows on the data so for turn seven i'm braking a little earlier going in with a vrs 1574 to 77, three meters earlier. It's nothing. So braking a little earlier and a lot less, and really rolling the brake pedal on. There's a sprint. So this is quite a good graph for the sprints with me at the moment. This is if I didn't have the VRS here today, I'd be happy with how this brake graph's looking on the sprints. So I rolled it on, got quite a high peak pressure, and then just a little dip little stab at the end and then you can see coming off them are sort of up down up down as i'm coming off i can't smoothly get my foot off the pedal without this this kind of wiggly line on the way down now if you look at the the vrs that line coming down is a lot smoother and we've just got a little tuck at the end 
uh, where I'm just still a tiny bit of pressure, like 6.7% pressure on the brakes, just as I'm getting on the power. Now, there you can see the uh, what I was talking about with a throttle. So with a sprint, a throttle, first 50%, boom, like a switch, and then ramping it off towards the end. And I'm not doing too bad with a VRS. I'm a little slow. But although I get on the throttle first on the VRS, I'm a little slow really getting onto it. So I only go up to like 6.2%, and then I feel like I can get on. But once I'm into the throttle, then I'm I'm really into it. I'm more than confident to get the power on. So that's looking pretty good. If we go down to, I believe it's Aqua Minerali, again, sprints were quicker through here by 0 0.057, but these graphs, again, are telling another story and something for the future. So coming in, slower. Uh, no, on the brakes on the same time, little little uh, slower off the throttle with VRS. So on the brakes at the same time, but look at that. Look here, the brake graph for the uh, for the VRS is in the blue, and it's a stab on, then it's off, and then it's on again. So I'm going up to 36%, then I'm off to six. 0.37 and then I'm smacking them back on again to 45 and then I'm back off again. That's horrendous. That's horrendous. And then it's just a mess of pointy sharp lines. If we look at the VRS, and this is what's helping me make my decision, we're up to 46% and then we just roll off. Lovely. Remember Aqua Minerali, you're entering quite fast and you just roll in the brakes on as you go down the hill through the right-hander. So I'm rolling that brake pedal on. Look at the balance I'm keeping on the car. It's looking really good. And then the stab at the end is just one constant movement. So up to the peak and then back off nice and gently. And I'm actually coming off the brakes before the VRS, whereas with, before the sprints. Whereas with the sprints, I'm having one last final stab to try and scrub the speed off. Now, it doesn't reflect well in the speed chart because I was actually quicker going into the corner with the sprints. But that brake chart says to me I can probably brake a little bit later with those VRS and I'm for sure keeping the car more balanced through that corner. So over the course of the race, if I keep doing that, tyres are going to mint. Over the course of the race, doing that with the sprints, probably going to struggle towards the end with uh, overheated tyres. All in all, we're looking pretty damn good. I think you know which way I'm headed with these. So what we do now, uh, let's have a look at these lap times and the averages over this race distance. Okay, so we'll start with the fastest lap comparison. Um, so we already know the Hussenville Sprints did a 135.077 and the, uh, the VRS pedals did a 135.118. So that's a tiny difference. I worked it out. My maths are good. It's 0 0.041 of a second. So less than half a tenth, um, which is not a lot in it. Not a lot in it. I was pretty happy with that. Um, average lap time. So over the three sessions, the average lap time taken from all those laps. So the sprints managed to do a 145.0. 495, which is pretty good, bang on, and I did not believe it was going to be this close. But with the VRS, we did a 145.471. So, um, amazing. And the VRS are actually just quicker than the, uh, than the sprints. So, I think that boils down to just not hooking the front wheels not getting those micro lockups and keeping the heat in the tires although they're not the quickest overall and i don't think that's going to be like that for long i could probably go out there now and do a quicker lap time with them um but over the course of a race distance there's just much more confidence to be right on the on the limit with those pedals so i think it speaks for itself in the data like we've shown you there yeah so where do we go from here
Well, I think they're going to stay on the rig. Um, that's all I can do. Unfortunately, I'm going to be selling my sprints by the look of it. Now, I've got some reasons for this, and you might not agree. It's so close that you're going to have to make your own decisions because there's a lot of factors in here that have swayed me towards the VRS being the pedals for me. Number one factor for me is I only really drive the cup car at the moment um, because that's where the best racing is in, in my view. Occasionally, I'll jump in the RSR with my teammates to do an endurance race um, or even a GT4, but it's predominantly only Porsches I'm in at the moment and I'm not really doing anything else on iRacing other than on those. So for you, it might be different. If you're jumping around between cars, having that software sat there, within a couple of seconds, you can set yourself up to jump in. You know, you can jump out of one race, official race on iRacing in a BMW M4, and then if you want to go jump in and do, I don't know, the oval, within 20 seconds, you can set your pedals and you can be in that oval car going around the dirt. I don't need to take that into consideration, uh, but you might. In which case, I would say go with the sprints. Now, remember that the performance between the two pedals was quite close, but I've got a lot of hours on the sprints in the last few weeks around that track, and I've only had like two, three hours with a VRS. So I think if you came back to me a week later and we did this again, the VRS would be way, way ahead because I'm going to learn more about the pedals. I'm going to be able to finesse the setup and find that extra pace out of them. I honestly, from what I've just seen with these pedals, I think that they can compete with the, uh, the ultimates and the pros, but uh, that's where I'm at at the moment. I think the quality of these pedals that they can compete with who's in belt at the top. That's just my personal opinion. Now, if you're an endurance racer, I think the VRS are going to be better um, because of using the spring. They're trying to give you a more consistent pedal over a long period of time in a race. And I think it's going to be a lot better for you. The, the problem with rubbers is uh, by it, it contracting them, expanding them, squishing them down, on and off, on and off, on and off it creates heat and rubber and heat don't go too well together because they're so big they don't disperse the heat as well as a coiled spring which is quite thin there's also got quite a bit of uh, space in between the cores for air to come through and obviously you radiate the heat away so i think over the course of a race you're going to get a much more consistent pedal with the vrs than you will with the traditional rubber bump stop pedals. Again, my personal opinion, but from what I've just seen, this is where I'm I'm landing at the moment. So it's really up to you. The price between the sprints and the VRS is bang on. Again, there's nothing in it. It's a bit like the lap times that we've just done. They're neck and neck. But I believe I'm going to do a long term review of these in a few weeks time. Um, so I'm going to have a few more weeks with them on the rig and just see where we end up. And we might, as long as I race and don't break the cup car setup, we might come back and go over these lap times again with the sprint data I've already got. And we'll compare them again in a couple of weeks and just see where they are. But for now, it's a hell of a product, hell of a product. I won't lie to you, I hated them when I first put them on the rig with that soft spring. But they got a lot better when I put the hard spring on. And that went against all my intuition that I'd gained with the sprints. I can see a big future. Yes, VRS have got it pretty right. There is still a lot of things they need to sort out. We need some instructions. We need to know how to set these pedals up, what some of these adjustments are doing, because there is nothing coming from VRS at the moment about that. I've heard rumors of software coming out for them. If 
that does come, please make it sooner rather than later because, again, we're going to have to review that. I think it's going to be the making of these pedals and also the dampeners. So the pedals are designed to fit hydraulic dampeners on, but they're not available yet. They're not coming out for another couple of months, closer to the summer. Um, I don't know how they're going to be with that until I've tried them. We will try them for sure. But yeah, there's a lot of exciting things coming out of VRS. So uh, keep your eyes open. Again, big thank you to Matt over at Midas who has shipped these over to me. I am now going to be purchasing them. So you can take everything that I've said today has been completely open. I'm not being paid to do this review. Um, it's all off my own back. So Matt did send them out to me for free and said, look, have a go of them, see what you think. Uh, he's actually really annoyed because I've turned around and said I'm keeping them and we, we're about 6,000 miles apart. So there's no way he's coming out here to get them back. So I'm going to send him some money now, which hopefully will, will quell his pain a bit more. Um, sorry, Matt, you're just going to have to wait a bit longer before you get to try them. But thanks, buddy, for sending them out. So if you need any equipment for your sim, give Midas a call over in the UK. He is a lovely guy, the nicest person I've met in sim racing. And he's got all the time in the world. Anyway, thanks for watching. And we'll see you again soon, hopefully. Please, if you haven't done so already, give a, a like and subscribe. I'll put the things up on the screen. And I'll pop some videos up on this side of the screen that might be of interest to you. But yeah, follow the channel. And I promise we'll get some more films out in the near future. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.